All right, guys, we're back with another one. We're talking about rotary switches today. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for this, so we're just going to go through a couple different styles of rotary switches that we carry here at CleanRight, uh, give you the lay of the land of the switches themselves, and then we will jump into how to wire and how to diagnose those. So in front of me, I have a couple different switches. This switch here is a two-stack, 10-position QC switch. We have a 12-position, two-stack electro switch, a three-stack, 12-position electro switch, and a three-stack, 10-position electro switch as well. The differences between these switches are how many positions you get. So we can go from eight to 12 position. And then the stacks are gonna be based on how many outputs you need for each function, right? So your standard system contact start pump pumping unit is gonna require a two stack switch. When you move into the, the higher end systems of you know, a VFD, like an Operator Pro Plus, you're automatically gonna move into that three stack switch because of the amount of signals we need per function to make that scenario happen. The QC switch comes pre-wired. Now, that does not mean that it's pre-wired for the layout of your coin box. You will have to adjust the wiring on this switch to meet up with your function layout of the coin box. The electro switches you have to hand wire yourself. Um, not always a bad option if you have some type of a scenario where you would like to make all the connections yourself. Maybe you wanted to make a very specific harness up using very specific wire, uh, color coding scenarios, things like that. Uh, you can get some 1820 conductor wire from us here at CleanRight and you could make up your own connections uh, in that way. Always a great option. If you're looking for something that you can buy, keep on the shelf, maybe pre-wire and have it sitting there waiting to go. This switch would allow you to disconnect it from your terminal strip. You would just unplug these two, take the switch off the faceplate, put the new switch on, plug it in, and you would be ready to rock and roll. That bay would be back up and going. Um, always a great option as well. Our standard two stack switches that we put in our coin boxes here at CleanRight is the QC switch. Um, we also find that to have an advantage in the sense that you can disconnect this and your power wiring, and you would be able to actually take that faceplate, say into your shop, into your equipment room, work on it at a bench like I'm at now, and then put it back into the coin box after you've fixed any issues that you're having. Um, outside of that, the electro switch is, is very nice as well. Again, if you want to hand wire that yourself, it is a great option. If you have some color coding scenarios that you would like to match up to, I'm going to take a break, move some of this stuff off, and we're going to dive into how to wire and how to diagnose a switch in the field. All right, guys, so let's jump into, I have a faceplate sitting here that we built for a customer. It has their function layout on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step on how to wire it up for this faceplate. You'll be able to translate this to whatever faceplate layout you have at your wash. I just wanna be able to physically show you how I would go about doing this. So I already know that my timed hot is or my load wire is my black wire going in. From there, honestly guys, I typically strip these guys down. I'm just gonna take every single wire off of this and then I'm gonna load up or I'm going to go through and I'm gonna wire this for this plate. All right guys, so now that we have all the wires off of the switch except for our load or our timed hot wire, and we have the rotary switch knob in the stop position. You can reference the Tom's Way um, sheet that you can get in the resource library to tell you where your next terminals are for the next position of this box. Or if you got yourself a meter or you already had a meter, you can use that as well 
if you don't have the Tom's Way sheet handy. So I'm gonna do one click, which would put us off a stop onto wheel and tire here. And then we can go ahead and take our meter. We know that the tone function is on and I can check where that tone is coming from. So now I know that it's on 12 and 22. The first function is wheel and tire. I know that wheel and tire for the QC switch is labeled green. So I will go ahead and insert that on the front stack or the function stack of the switch. Our next function is pre-soak. And from there, guys, you don't have to tone test every time. You're just gonna work yourself clockwise. So pre-soak is orange. I'm gonna land the pre-soak wire on the front stack. The next function is going to be high pressure soap. Here's where, here's where the second stack comes into play. I'm gonna take that pump contactor wire, that brown wire, I'm gonna land that on the back stack. That's gonna trigger the pump to run. And I'm gonna land the high pressure soap solenoid wire, that red wire, our function wire, on the front stack. Next position is foam brush. Foam brush for this switch is purple as the color code goes. I'm gonna land that as well. High pressure rinse. Rinse, as everybody has probably guessed it, is gonna be blue signifying the color of water. Hopefully your water is blue. Gonna slide that uh, water solenoid wire or that rinse wire on the front stack. And remember, that's a high pressure function. So I'm gonna have to land that brown pump contact wire behind it. Wax, this one could be tricky. Are you running wax at low pressure? Do you have a low pressure panel running your wax or are you running high pressure? I know for this customer, they, were, they wanted just the plain wax sticker, but they are actually running that wax at high pressure. So I'm gonna land the gray wax solenoid wire on the front stack for the function and I'm gonna follow that up with the pump contact wire behind it to trigger that pump to run and give that high pressure function. Now, this customer also is using engine degreaser. Um, some people at their washes will use engine degreaser and the wheel and tire as the same chemical. You have two choices here. You can, and then we don't have any other functions listed. So we have three wires left. Uh, yellow and white on the QC switch are option wires. So whether it be air dry, or if you wanted to use it to trigger this uh, engine degreaser, or you can use the pink triple foam wire, it does not matter. What we're gonna do in this scenario is I'm gonna use the triple foam wire. I'm gonna land that on that function. And if you are actually running the same system for wheel and tire and engine degreaser, what we would do is we would jump to the terminal strip and I'm actually going to land on the terminal strip those two color wires together. So we know that pink is the engine degreaser, green is the wheel and tire, and you're gonna see that I'm gonna land both of these on the terminal strip together. Why am I doing that? because we need both of those signals to trigger the same function. So now anytime the green wire gets power, it'll send through to the engine, it'll send through to the wheel and tire, and anytime the pink wire gets power from the switch, it'll send it to that same system. If those were two separate soaps, you can still use the pink wire, you would just leave these wires separated on the terminal strip. What do we do with these last two wires? I'm gonna land them. I'm not gonna cut them off because I know that I'm gonna wanna fill these two spots later down the road. So I'm just gonna land those two wires on here. And what you would end up seeing is on your terminal strip, yellow and white will have no wires connected on the other side, triggering any functions to happen. So that is how you can go through and wire your rotary switch. Um, let's jump into a little bit of diagnostics. Diagnostics is going to be the same if you're diagnosing your rotary switch or a function trigger, 
We're going to do that the same way that we were finding the outputs. So if I'm worried that my wheel and tire is not working, so I'm in bay one, wheel and tire is not working, I need to figure out what's going on with that. My first move is to uh, add payment to the coin box itself. That should have the timer apply power to the rotary switch. Now remember, the timer is also going to send power to the terminal strip. So what I'm going to do at that point is I'm going to turn my meter to volts AC and I'm going to go to my common wire, 24 volt common wire, and I'm going to go to my black timed hot wire. At that point, I should see 24 volts show up on my meter. And if I do see that, the next thing I can do is I can go from my common wire to my green wire on the terminal strip, and that should show 24 volts. If it does, then we know that everything inside the coin box is working correctly. We're having an issue in the equipment room with that, uh, that system, whatever function you're on that you're getting that scenario. It's showing us that that function is not working for that bay in the equipment room. If I came to that scenario and I had power here, the next thing I would do is I would go to the next bay. I would trigger that same function in that bay and see if it works in that bay. If it does work in that bay, but it's just the bay that we just tested, at that point, I would go to that low pressure system or that high pressure system and start to diagnose from there. But that would tell us that everything within the coin box is working correctly. So if you have any questions about rotary switches, hit our website, check out all the reference library items that are in there that break down how these things get wired together and how the electricity actually flows through your coin box. And outside of that, if you have any questions, give us a call and we'll get you fixed up. Clean right.